The field of worker health and safety or occupational health is a field for everyone. We need all voices in so we can help, help everybody everywhere. It's teaching you how to identify hazards and sort of forensically investigate ways to enhance our health in workplaces and beyond. So I think what motivates me to get up and do it every day is I feel like I'm making a difference. That's the real bottom line. The role and importance of OEHA professionals is growing and diversifying. It's a profession that not only keeps workers safe, but actively improves their well-being and those of the communities they serve. Harvard ERC is playing a prominent role in preparing future leaders in occupational safety and health, together with study results that have actually led to improvements in the work environment. At the Harvard School of Public Health, there's a noticeable joy in the voices of faculty, students, and researchers when discussing industrial hygiene and OEHS careers. I'm excited about this work because I'm genuinely passionate about it. I think it's important. What we're talking about in public health is protecting the lives of millions of people, billions of people on the planet. Worker health and safety is a field that's expanding. There's occupational medicine. There's industrial hygiene or occupational uh, hygiene. There's nursing involved in this, but it also has elements of policy, data science, uh, real-time sensor technology, laboratory expertise, and this speaks to the beauty of the field of worker health and safety. And the Harvard ERC is where a multidisciplinary experience is the basis for collaborations that transform knowledge into action. Multiple disciplines from different backgrounds converge with one mission, and that's to improve the health and safety of the American workforce, and actually the global workforce. Diverse areas of research tackle protection and prevention on a large scale. I think we have a massive responsibility right now in this moment to lead the healthy building space. Things like good lighting and air quality and acoustic performance and water quality. My aims are to better investigate the chemical mixtures we're exposed to. Particularly stain repellent chemicals. And these chemicals are used so widely in furniture, carpet, clothing, nonstick pans that they have been found in the bodies of over 98% of Americans. Their research revealed non-chemical solutions. For example, they've removed flame retardant chemicals, the PFAS stain repellents, the antimicrobials, so far in at least furniture and carpet, and are continuing to expand that. Technology and big data are indispensable tools to help improve health outcomes. This is something we focus a lot on right now, is the integration of real-time sensors and technology into exposure and risk assessment in the workplace. To actually better assess exposure, real-time exposure, and uh, early adverse effects, rather than late, too late to do anything about it. It's a brave new world out there that's tremendous opportunities for individuals interested in hygiene. This training ground for current and future leaders in occupational safety and health values diversity, inclusion, and access to the profession and the professionals. Every year we have great students leave, and we also have great students come in. And each person brings their own background, their own history, their own experience, and their own ideas, and it brings energy every single semester. Naila Segula researches environmental and occupational health in carceral facilities. But even when you think about people who work in prisons, there is a lot of lacking occupational health research for prison guards or other prison staff. How important is the multidisciplinary approach in the classroom and in your work? So they really helped me think about how am I gonna prove some of these theories I have? How am I gonna make a case to someone who maybe doesn't agree with me? If I'm trying to change policies, not everyone is gonna be a public health professional. Not everyone cares about this population I'm advocating for. So the classroom has been a great place to have to present and make the case to make these changes. The new way forward is to be sure that public health goals are aligned with business goals so we can move forward together. And the beauty of that model is that we can act quickly. And the focus on executive and continuing professional education is part of the equation. The ERC can provide this for you, provide financial support and the uh, intellectual educational support to help launch a career where you make a difference in the lives of millions of people. Um, 
Uh, no exaggeration, it's here. Faculty and researchers refining today's workforce, preparing the next generation, protecting workers, and lowering the risk for the most susceptible. So really improving the health of everyone requires everyone to have a seat at the table. Their eyes are open because they never got it before in their training. And it's, it's, it was hard to imagine until they actually come and start to interact and take the courses. My advisor, Dr. Joe Allen, in his lab on the whiteboard always has this sentence in big letters, how will our research impact the world? So our framing has always been, how can we drive solutions and real world interventions to reduce our exposures? Whatever your skills, whatever your passion, there's a place for you in public health. The same applies to our field. Whatever your skills, whatever your passion, there's a place for you in worker health and safety.